Hi there, welcome back. Well, what you see before you is something that I've been meaning to build for some time, or rather rebuild, because I had one already. It is an audio dummy load with selectable speaker or dummy options, and also an off. You can choose the dummy load to be 4 ohms or 8 ohms. It's got a left and right channel. And then it also has the signal going to the scope. Now these two are the inputs. You take it from your amp speaker outputs, plug it in there. And then of course, from there, it'll go off to the speaker or to the dummy load, which is on the back, which I'll show you in a minute. But first, if you recall from some of the videos that I've done, quite a few of them actually, this thing was there. Obviously it wasn't in this state. This has had all the hardware, most of the hardware removed. But um, I decided to do a new row of uh, test equipment under the bottom shelf of the workbench. So this one had to go. And I found a size of aluminium element. It's the extruded aluminium that um, I can get quite a big quantity of quite easily here in Madeira. And I decided to do it for the different size of aluminium that I can get. And it's a bit higher. This is four centimeters. The one I'm using is 6.5, the one you've just seen. Now this is the first of the pieces of equipment that I'll be putting on here. I've already done a video where I describe the design of uh, an RF attenuator that's also going to go on here. But this one I need quite urgently because I've been testing some amps. I've been working on the Marantz 250M and I'm waiting for some components and I'll be needing this thing to do the final testing soon. So before showing you the actual build or the build steps and what it looks like inside, let me describe to you what the thinking is behind this. Prototyping is fine, but uh, if you've tried to build something, especially when it involves physical and mechanical layout, you have probably have found that you wished you'd done something differently and by then you've got holes in the boxes and you've got uh, material that's been compromised and wasted and sometimes you just don't have the guts to throw it out and start again. I decided to do that but this time I decided to be a bit smarter and since I have the tools I thought why not use them. So I came into SketchUp and SketchUp is bloody amazing. I mean I keep forgetting how useful it is you draw everything to scale and you can then work with it and uh, change it very, very simply. I won't go into how SketchUp works. You'll have to learn to do that by yourself. All I can tell you is that it is very, very simple to use once you've learned some basic rules and it is incredibly, incredibly useful. It's the next best thing to building it and then finding out you've got something wrong. So what I did was I used a 20 centimeter section of that uh, extruded aluminium element. The ones that have come cut with the top section cut off. I can get that quite easily here. And then I started putting in the components, spacing them in what I thought was a more logical order. And this is what we've got. Left speaker in, obviously. Right speaker in. Everything is the same to the left and to the right. We have a selector here, which uh, allows us to select speaker, dummy or off. The reason I've chosen off is because I may just want to see the signal on the scope without any load. So I can actually put it off and I'll have the uh, scope image. This obviously is the scope image. It's uh, the scope signal. It's the exact signal coming in. Whether it goes to the speaker or the dummy or off, it still goes up to the top there. The same thing applies if I choose 4 ohms or 8 ohms as the load. Obviously the speaker load will be whatever speaker I've got on there. And uh, the ones I use are 8 ohms. So this does not apply to the uh, speaker. It applies to the dummy load. I can make it a 4 ohm dummy load or an 8 ohm dummy load depending on whether I switch in the second set of resistors or not. I'll show you that in a minute. This particular switch, it's uh, an on-off function. So two separate on-off switches in one unit. And the reason is I want to switch the 4 ohm, 8 ohm to the left and the right at the same time, but I still want to keep them completely isolated from each other. And the same applies then to the right-hand channel. 
Now, because of the size constraints, you'll see why that speaker out connector is at the bottom. But if I look at the inside here, this thing really, really lets you see what sort of space you've got. And by using the uh, 3D warehouse function on um, SketchUp, you can actually get most of these units built already. Things like uh, banana plugs or sockets, switches, the uh, speaker connector. Somebody had been kind enough to provide one. And then also the resistors. Now, the resistors I'm using are 8 ohm 100 watt resistors. And the way I'm going to do this is if I choose 8 ohm, then only that top resistor or the bottom one, but only one resistor gets used. If I choose 4 ohm, the second resistor is switched in in parallel by that selector switch over there. We'll see the schematic in a minute, but these two have a common ground. The switching is between there and there. So I have one hole in the chassis that goes through there. You have to make sure you make these holes slightly bigger than you need and you make sure that you deburr them unless you want to put in a grommet to make sure that uh, it doesn't cut your wire. I don't think it'll be necessary because this will be going straight in with no stress on there. So it's just a, a choice. Same applies to here. These holes are made bigger than I need them and they'll bring the wires in from the resistors into the actual chassis over there. The, um, the actual um, speaker outlet I've put on the bottom because I didn't have enough space at the back. I could probably have squeezed it in here, but considering that these resistors could get quite hot, I didn't want to have that affecting the plastic that this thing is made of. So it actually fits quite nicely because it means that when I'm looking at this from the front, I can in fact connect and disconnect speakers from the front without having to remove this whole thing. Now, as you can see here, there's the RF attenuator that's going right next to it. And I've already built this in, in the same way, just to see what, uh, what this will look like. And when I, made the, when I make the changes to the board that I'm working on, I'll be building this exactly like this. Some of my subscribers will be happy to see that I've changed this particular switch to 24 dB as opposed to 18 on their recommendation. I think it was a brilliant idea. But this is just basically showing off this 3D software, which I'm sure a lot of you know. And there are alternatives out there. Some of them um, aimed more at the uh, 3D printer function. This one is just for, um, well, basically doing any modeling you like. And it is very, very easy. So let's have a look at the schematic and I'll show you what the whole idea of these, uh, of these different units or different components is. Right, so what exactly are we trying to achieve here? Well, what we have normally is an amplifier which has two outputs, the positive and the negative. I'm not going to call the negative ground for now. And we need to pass them through either to a speaker or alternatively to a dummy load which will simulate the speaker. Now this speaker, the speakers that I use are generally 8 ohms which means that I want to use 8 ohm resistors here as well. And we need to do this to both channels. So that's basically what we're trying to do with this dummy load, is to have an alternative between connecting it to the speaker there or connecting it to the dummy load there. And whichever one you choose, what we're trying to do is to make sure that the ground, that ground point there, is not ground. It's just a negative. And the reason is we don't necessarily want both channels to have the same ground. And the reason for that is pretty obvious when you think about what type of amplifiers you can have. You can have bridged amplifiers. So this is a normal situation where you would have two speakers connected to the amplifier. And in some cases, that negative is ground. 
and that negative is also ground. If that is the case, then it's fine to actually join these two up and call that a common ground. However, if you're testing a, um, some of the digital amps or even some uh, linear amplifiers that are in bridged mode, the negatives aren't necessarily common. And that's something you have to be very, very careful with. And that's why we are creating a situation where these two have completely separate negative points which would normally be called ground, but in this particular case, it's just the negative connector to the speaker or to the dummy load, and they are never joined together, so you don't have fireworks. So let's look at the schematic for this. So what we have typically is you've got speaker outs from your amp. They'll go into this dummy load, and they'll go in as a plus signal and a minus signal. So call this left in. The ground, or rather the negative point, goes straight through and that becomes your out to the speaker, call this left out. And your positive comes in and now you need to select between speaker and dummy load. And this is where you have a switch. This particular switch has three positions. The one here just simply takes your speaker in straight through to speaker out. And so the speakers you've got connected to your dummy load will act as speakers to your amplifier with no interference. The switch, however, has another position in the middle, which is off. And then you've got another position to the bottom here, which is dummy. And that dummy goes to a dummy load. Now, our uh, speakers over here happen to be 8 ohms and I want to make typically dummy load 8 ohms. So that resistor, and that's what it'll be, a resistor is an 8 ohm resistor. And the ones I have are 100 watts. So in a situation like this, if you select the top, you've got your speaker. If you select the middle, it's off. So there's no load connected to your um, amplifier. And if you select dummy, your amplifier is seeing an 8 ohm resistor over here. And that's really all it is. However, we want to go one step further and we want to make it possible to create a 4 ohm dummy load. And the best way to do that is just add another switch here. And this is a simple on off switch which basically puts another 8 ohm 100 watt resistor in parallel with the first one. So if that switch is open, your load is 8 ohms. If that switch is closed, your load is 4 ohms, with the advantage that now you've got double the power capacity, 200 watts as opposed to 100 watts. Now that happens to both channels. So if we look at the second channel, let's just draw it quickly. And there we have it. So we've got both channels now where you can connect your left and your right and you've got your left and right outputs. In this particular case, the way the uh, selector switch is uh, chosen here, it's choosing the dummy load, and in this particular case, it's seeing 8 ohms. Now, because I generally use both left and right um, the same, this switch here should be, or is going to be, a dual gang switch. So when I select 4 ohms, it happens to both channels. When I select 8 ohms, it applies to both channels. However, these switches are completely separate from each other. These grounds or these negative points are completely separate left and right from each other. So we are not creating a, uh, a ground short over here. The oscilloscope connector is simply taken from there and we've got our B and C straight across the output. And so when you connect your scope to that one there, you see your left channel. When you connect your scope to that one there, you see your right channel. The thing to be careful of is that if you connect a scope 
to this, then the ground of the scope will short out, if you connect both channels, will short out the grounds of these two, and it'll go one step further. It will actually connect this negative, it'll make it a ground, and it'll also make it earth ground, so your mains earth comes into play here as well. And in that case, you've got to be very, very careful because if you don't know what you're doing, if you're not careful, if this is not really grounded, you can create a short circuit here and blow up the input of your oscilloscope. But a lot of better people than I have done videos on this. Dave Jones at uh, EEV Blog has a brilliant video on uh, how not to blow up your oscilloscope. So I suggest you look at that. But this is basically the circuit we're going to build. A few considerations here. The first thing is these resistors, I've chosen 8 ohms and I've chosen 100 watts simply for size. They are supposed to be um, wire wound or low inductance resistors. I didn't go to extremes on finding extremely high quality resistors. I just bought some on eBay. I don't think for my purposes that it's going to make any difference. If you wanted to go to extremes, then you can certainly find some better resistors than these. I know Dale has some brilliant resistors that are um, a bit more expensive and they can go up to higher power as well. And uh, they certainly would be better than these. The other thing is the switches that I have here are pretty heavy duty. These are like 10 amps, 250 volts. They don't, know to, they don't need to be that high a voltage, but they should definitely be capable of carrying a certain amount of current. If you are running this, uh, the amplifier at pretty high power, you will get significant uh, currents flowing through here. So those little toggle switches, those miniature toggle switches are definitely not a good idea. And that's exactly what I had in the first version of this uh, load that I built. I also chose some chunky switches. They're not only high power, but when you click them, you certainly hear the clunk going in. And that sort of gives you more confidence that you're uh, switching things on when you want to switch them on because you can actually feel the clunk. That's just a personal choice. It's not uh, a big deal. But this is the schematic of what we're going to build. Let's get on with it. Now, when you've done all the thinking, which is normally done on the software, it then becomes very easy to, to do the build because you just mark out everything. Make sure you measure things twice and cut once or drill once as the old uh, saying goes. And um, get all the holes done, test with the different components to ensure that everything fits. You've got three sides to this, really. So be methodical and make sure that everything is prepared. Make sure that uh, all the holes are done in the right places. Make sure you put the components on there to ensure that they fit right. And then you can get going and drill like crazy and make sure that you deburr all the holes so that you don't end up with uh, any edges that will cut your wiring. And then, my friends, it's a matter of putting everything in. Now, as you can see, I went for um, this method of interconnects. It ensures that I can adjust it or change it in the future without uh, major difficulty. There is not much to this, as I've said, but if we look at the detail, we've got the, uh, the uh, banana sockets here. We've got this really chunky switch. There's no question that you can feel it and hear it. <laughs> in fact, so can anybody else in the house. But um, I like it. I like those. This is the 8 ohm, 4 ohm. And this is the other side. Speaker of dummy. Now, the two sides are independent. I can have dummy on this side and speaker on that side. I can have that one off and I can just use that one. I've got to be careful, or we've all got to be careful, that if we are using this for tube amps, you should not leave it off because that's like running the amp without a load, which is not a good idea. Now, once you've got your dummy selected, you can then choose whether it's an 8 ohm load or a 4 ohm load. You can also then connect your uh, oscilloscope left and right channel and see the results on the scope, bearing in mind that these two then short the grounds together. These entire circuits are independent as they stand. 
If you do short them together, you've got the ground of this unit, including the ground of the amplifier connected to your mains earth, which sometimes is not what you want. But basically, this is a bit of a show and tell of what I want to, what I've just designed and, uh, and thought about. This allows me to connect the speakers from below without having to remove this. Now let's look at the back. These resistors are a 100 watt 8 ohm each with a heat sink. I've put some heat sink compound between the resistors and the, the actual uh, uh, cabinet to help dissipate the heat. I don't expect this thing to get excessively hot. I don't normally run high power for any length of time, but it just helps. This little bit here is to attach the, uh, the unit to the back once it's fitted into that uh, bracket that I'm going to put in there. You can see that the holes are wide enough that the wires go through without touching the edges, so we don't have a problem. The two grounds are connected together. This side's connected together, that side's connected together. They are definitely separate apart and they go to the speaker grounds. So we then switch, as you see from the circuit, we switch the um, the actual top resistor in parallel to the bottom one to make it a 4 ohm because it goes to that middle switch which just basically creates a short. And that is basically it. I have the uh, BNC's connected to ground and to the actual input. Straight where it comes in, it comes in from here, goes to the middle of the selector switch. That's where the BNC is connected to. Also with a little solder tag. I haven't run any wires close together. Not that it's really important here. You know, this is uh, speaker level uh, signals. You don't really have a problem with shielding requirements or things like that, but it is good to just keep things separate, avoid shorts. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy. And the faceplate, yeah, the faceplate. Well, a while ago, I actually designed and built some guitar pedals for friends of mine who are guitarists. And um, at the time, I came up with this idea of uh, instead of using any other kind of letter transfer, I decided to actually uh, draw the, the layout that I wanted in one of the drawing software packages. I happened to use, uh, I think it was Adobe Illustrator. It's very accurate. Then I would print it onto a adhesive plastic sheet, which was sold in A4 sizes, like normal paper. And then I would just stick it on after preparing the surface and after drilling. And I would also then spray uh, lacquer, clear lacquer over the top, just to protect it. And then I would cut out the holes on the, on the plastic that I could see through and all the components would sort of help hold it in. I had very good results with that, but this one, I, I now had a problem because I couldn't find that sheet. And I found that if I use um, the sheets that are used for overhead, head, overhead projectors, which you can still buy quite readily, print on them. And then what I did here was I sprayed glue on the surface, on the back surface of that plastic sheet and put it on. And I wasn't too hopeful that it wouldn't go on with, that it would go on without any bubbles, but it did. It actually came out very, very well. And so I have my dummy load built. And as I said, not much to it, but this is a really useful piece of equipment. And this one, the second time around, was done um, paying special attention to the layout that I came up with on, uh, on SketchUp, which I consider to be the ideal layout. Let me show you this thing in place. And there it is. I have these little BNC connectors that are made up specifically to connect to the scope. There's two of them. This is also the reason why I decided to put it under the scope, so it's right there. And I would then be able to monitor the left and right channel separately. Again, bearing in mind, this thing is now shorted together. So that's it, guys. I, I really hope this uh, encourages you to do the same, if that's what you want. If you don't, hope you've enjoyed the video. And um, I will see you again back soon with some more DIY test equipment. 
because I I just like doing the stuff myself. I'm I'm a nutcase. Uh, all the hours spent on something like this, if I had to quantify them, would make this a very very expensive piece of equipment. But the pleasure I get from making it myself just uh, tips the balance in favor of DIY. Thanks for watching. See you back soon. Bye for now.